Hey everyone, welcome back and let's write some more neat code today. So today let's solve the problem height checker. So the idea is we're given a array of heights and we are going to basically have them sorted in non-decreasing order. That basically means increasing order, but in case there's a tie, so there could be duplicates uh, like this, this sorted in non-decreasing order is gonna look something like this. I think the three ones are gonna go first, then a two, then three, then four. So this is non-decreasing order. Now, once we have that, they pretty much tell us exactly what to do, to be honest. Like, you don't really have to think a lot on how we're going to solve this problem. They basically tell us we're going to have that sorted in non-decreasing order, and then we just want to count the number of indices where the original height at that index was not equal to the expected height. So expected is when we sort it. So here, just to uh, blow this up a little bit, you can see that we're just gonna look at every pair and determine how many indexes have a different value at each uh, pair. So this is the same, same, this time it's different. So that's plus one, same, this time it's different. That's another plus one and this time it's different. So we counted three indexes where the value is different. So that's pretty much the solution. So as you can kind of tell, there's two steps. One is the sorting phase where we just want to sort the heights. Well, based on ascending order, pretty much. But we do want to preserve a copy of the original heights because we want to be able to compare the indexes. Um, the second phase is basically just doing that, just the comparison. So in terms of the overall time complexity, the comparing is going to be linear time. Now it's also going to take extra space because we are going to have a copy. So linear time, linear space. Now the sorting can be done a few different ways. If we use like a built-in sort method, that's probably going to be about n log n. So that's going to be the bottleneck in terms of the time complexity of our solution. But the most natural way to actually sort this input, if you scroll down in the problem description and take a look at the constraints, you'll see that the length of the input is going to be at most 100. Not only that, but the range of values is going to be between 1 and 100. So like for any given height, it's going to be in this range. Knowing this, we can do kind of a variation of bucket sort. Uh, it's counting sort. I think I've called it bucket sort in the past, but it's technically counting sort. So the idea is that we have a bunch of, I call them buckets, but you can call them whatever you want, up until 100. So we're going to have a bucket for every value from 1 through 100. And we can do this with an array. We can have an array of size 100 to do this. So technically the space from that is gonna be constant or you could say 100. And then for each of these, we're going to count how many times does each value occur. So we're gonna go through the input. We're gonna say, okay, one. We're gonna to go to index one and then add one there. We see another one. We're gonna to go to index one and increment that by one. So we're gonna have two. And then once we're here, we see a four. So I didn't put the four here, but let's just add it there. So we're gonna have one four. We're gonna have a two. So we'll go here, increment that by one. We have another one. So this is gonna become three and we have a three as well. So here that's gonna be one. So this is the key. So this is the number and this is how many counts we have. This is how many occurrences we have of that number. So with that, we can then iterate over this array from left to right in sorted order and then build the expected array pretty easily because we're going to get to one. We're going to see there are three of them. So we're going to loop three times, adding a one, adding a one, and adding a one. Then we're going to get to two. We see there's only a single two, so just loop once, add a two. We're going to get to three. There's a single three, add that. We're going to get to four, single four, add that. We're going to go through the rest of this, even though there aren't any of them, there are all going to be zero. So we're not going to add any more elements to our expected array. But you can see that this obviously matches the expected array. It is in sorted order. So this is kind of the natural way, I think, to solve this problem, given the constraints. It's kind of the most optimal in terms of the big O time complexity. It's going to be big O of N but not just big O of N, it's gonna be N plus K actually, because when you look at the input, 
it was only six, right? It was a pretty small array, but the biggest thing, the most inefficient part about this was actually the range of numbers, which I'm gonna call K. And in that, in this case, it was 100, right? Our values could have been in the range from one to 100. So we're gonna have to loop over this entire thing. So that's what the K term is in this case. So this is gonna be the overall time complexity of our sorting. And then we'll just iterate over the two arrays. That'll be O of N. So this is the bottleneck here. So I'm gonna go ahead and code this one up. Now I think it's worth actually doing this by just using the built-in sort. So that's actually the first thing I'm gonna do. I'm not gonna call heights.sort because we know that actually modifies the array. We wanna preserve the original array. So I'm gonna call sorted. So this creates a sorted copy of heights. So I'm gonna call this expected just to kind of use the naming conventions that they gave us in the problem description. And then once we have this, it's pretty easy because we know both of these are gonna be of the same length. So we we can say for i in range, let's just take the length of heights. I'm going to actually declare a result, which I'm gonna, which is gonna count how many times they differ, like how many indexes they differ at, and that's what we're gonna return. So now the only thing left to do is count it. So let's check if the height at index i is different from the expected height at index i. Let's increment the result by one, and that's what we're gonna return. Let me just quickly run this to show you that it works. And you can see it does, it's pretty efficient. And since the input array is so small, it's actually very, very efficient, even this n log n sorting. But let's try to implement sorting from scratch using counting sort. So let's get rid of this. We can leave the rest of this code because we're still going to build that expected array. But now let's do it manually. So I'm gonna have count. This is gonna be that array I was talking about. I'm actually gonna make it of size 101 because I wanna be able to map one to index one, and I wanna be able to map 100 to index 100. So this is one larger than it technically needs to be, but that just kinda of makes the mapping a little bit more simple in my opinion. So now let's go through every height in the input heights, and then for this height, let's go to the index, which is gonna be very simple for us, and then just increment it by one. Now that we have that, it's time to build the expected array. And we're gonna do that by iterating over the heights from left to right. So I'm gonna say for a I, or let's say height in range from one to 100. So we're gonna put 101 here. And now we're gonna get the count for that particular height, how many times did it show up here? That's gonna tell us how many times we're gonna loop. So we can get this just by taking count of this height. That's pretty much what we were trying to do, create that mapping. So now that we have this, this tells us how many times to loop. So I'm gonna say for, um, I could say for I in range, or I could say underscore, cause we're not really using it. So I'm gonna do underscore in range of C. So this tells us how many times we wanna append this height to expected. So that's what we're gonna do, expected append this height. So this is solving it with counting sort. We're doing the sorting manually this time. And then down here is where we are just counting the differing indexes. So let's run this. And you can see this one is actually technically less efficient. And that does make sense because the inputs are so small that the bottleneck is in many cases probably just gonna be the fact that we're looping a hundred times. So even though this is technically more efficient in terms of big O, it's not more efficient in these test cases, I guess. If you found this helpful, check out neatcode.io. Thanks for watching and I'll see you soon.